start off with a little sage here. I am up on top of this mountain. I've never been this high up. This is beautiful. I'll show you here in a little bit. So I like to burn sage because it smells great and because it just kind of supposedly like kind of freshens up the energy and so <laughs> mm, so nice here's a little for you so you can order sage online I like white sage but I'm telling you every morning I just wake up and I just kind of cover my body in it and um, supposedly on a very scientific level like chemically or um, molecularly that sage changes the molecular stru molecular structure of the air um, that surrounds the body and it's just good stuff and it smells great just like a little little rebirth little rejuvenation so I'll let that burn while we talk here and I had posted before you know about, I don't know three hours ago before I started this journey here let me show you where I am <laughs> see I'm up in this little nook and watch this <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Look at that. Look at that. Hazy mountains off in the distance. And I am up on this ledge. And so before I came up here, I posted and asked people to tune into their intuition and just throw out some topics or throw out some things that they're dealing with. You know, I asked, you know, in what areas is life? <laughs> My hair is going crazy. What in what areas is life not working for you and what ways is life um, confusing and so some of the things that I got were about financial stresses um, some things like you know why are we our own worst enemies why do we beat ourselves up and things like that so we're going to talk about some of those and um, I'm going to start out with an analogy it's just coming to me right now actually so imagine that in your life that if things aren't going like you want them to go and really that's all I talk about is my message is just for people who want to achieve their fullness, achieve inner peace, to get to that place in life where you're like, yeah, oh, I knew that I could be happy. I knew I could find peace and now I'm experiencing it and my life is coming alive. And, you know, the financial stresses that were there before aren't there anymore. And the relationship stresses that were there before just are fading away and I'm just feeling alive. And whatever I'm doing, whether I'm rock climbing or whether I'm on Facebook chatting with people or whether I'm at my job, I'm just knowing that I'm right where I need to be and I'm feeling alive and I'm feeling fresh and I'm feeling like I am the driver of my life and that it is not <laughs> my life that is controlling me. It is not my life circumstances that is controlling me. And that's where everybody wants to be, right? In that place where you just, ah, life is good and it is good here and I'm inviting you to join me here, join me here, because it is a love revolution. And all that means is people giving themselves and each other the freedom to be themselves. Okay, but it's not easy. As I always say, it's challenging. Okay, the process can be described pretty simply in my experience. And that's what I try to do is just shed light on how you can get there because I found it myself and I tell the things that, that, that I have learned in my own journey and I have assisted a lot of other people on their journeys too because this is what I love to do. I feel like this is, I'm living my life's purpose right in this very moment. This is my life's purpose to just be here now, right in this moment. I'm supposed to be up on top of this glorious mountain <laughs> talking to you, whoever it is that's listening to me. And I'm excited because life is good. <laughs> and the sun is shining. I'm just listening to that reverberate through the canyon. I'm telling you, the anchor for all of this is silence. Okay, so many of the questions that came up um, when I asked people to throw out topics or questions is about, you know, about how, how do we get out of depression and how do we, why, why are we our own worst enemies? How do we get out of fear? How do we face fears? That was one that came up a whole bunch of times. How do we step in a new direction and get out of our fears? Okay, and the analogy that I was going to say before is like, imagine that you are in quicksand and you're realizing that you're sinking. Okay, you're realizing like, hey, my life is not getting better. Okay, and that's what happened to me back in 2011. I just realized, you know, my life is not feeling better. And on paper, it looks good, but I just don't feel great. 
You know, I started, I was thinking back to my college years as though those were the best years of my life. And I just realized I don't want to live a life where my best years are behind me. That doesn't feel right. I won't settle for that. And so if you're watching this video, I just know that you are somebody on some level who has decided that you will not settle for less than all you were intended for, for living your purpose and for being fulfilled. Okay, and these aren't pie in the sky, you know, rah, rah things that I'm talking about. I'm talking about just putting one foot in front of the other and starting to make choices and do the things that can actually get you out of the quicksand. So most people, once they realize that they're sinking in the quicksand, they start to, to kind of panic and they start to move quicker and try to climb out of it with the only ways that they know, right? With like quicksand, if you start to fall in, that's what happens to people. And people sink and die in quicksand, okay? If you're not familiar with it, when you move to try to get out, it actually makes it worse and you sink. And in life, people are mostly working unconsciously with the tools that they have at their disposal, which are limited. And so they use the, the same old methods to try to get better results and they just sink deeper and deeper into the quicksand. And that's when anxiety starts to take over and depression and life just doesn't feel good and relationships are challenging and there's conflict and there's hatred and there's venom and oh, oh and there's just all of this confusion about what to do. Because the mind, okay, our minds does not know. Our minds do not know of other options. So that's what expanding consciousness is. It's really just bringing new things into awareness. It's not some new age mumbo jumbo thing. Expanding consciousness and raising your awareness is literally just about knowing of new options. And that's what I do, everybody, beautiful people. That's what I do. I am here as a guide to literally just suggest new options for you. So let's talk about it. So if you're sinking in the quicksand of life, rather than trying to do the same old things, it's time to make a conscious choice to change. And as I mentioned in almost all my videos, feeling your feelings is the way out, okay? Being with the pain and the discomfort that is unresolved in your body and being with it unconditionally, that is what allows you to get out of the quicksand. So imagine in that analogy that you're sinking and you're sinking and you start to realize like, I'm going to go under and this is not good. I need to, to make a change or else I'm going to die. And imagine you start to relax as, as hard as it is, right? If you're sinking, the hardest thing to do <laughs> is to relax. The hardest thing to do is to relax. But what I'm telling you, friends, is that that is the path is to relax. Relax the thoughts, let them slow down, get into silence. No matter how difficult it is, you need to be able to find some silence. You need to consciously make a change if you want out of the quicksand. So imagine if you're in the quicksand and you start to relax, you notice, hey, you start to, you're starting to float up a little bit. The more you relax and the more you tune into what's going on in your body, you start to rise up to the surface and that's just what happens in this life. That's as simply as I can explain what this process is, okay? And it's not um, the most easy thing, but that's it. So any stress, it's about feeling your feelings and coming out of the quicksand. Okay, so let's talk specifically about some of these things. How do we face our fears? Okay, well, the first thing to face your fear is when the fear comes up is to acknowledge it and speak to it. Bring it into consciousness. Bring it into awareness, okay? Don't ignore it. Don't deny it. Don't avoid it. You know, write it down. Say it out loud. Look in the mirror and look right into your eyes and say, hey, I'm scared about um, losing my job or I'm scared about what will happen if I leave my husband or you know, whatever your fears are. I'm scared about starting this new business because I'm scared of failing. Get it out there, okay? And then once you get those fears out there, start to examine in your body, where are those fears? Because like I always say, any stressful thoughts are just resonating off of bound up, repressed, unresolved emotions and unresolved energy that's in your body. So like I was saying yesterday, the tension in your body wants your attention. Okay, it wants to be released and let go. And that's the way out. So every time, just like in the quicksand, every time you stop, you know, doing the same old things and, and trying to get out in the same old ways and you relax and you feel, 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 your body will respond by giving you new awareness and new insights and new knowledge of how to deal with things, whatever the fears are in your life. Okay, now let's talk about what a lot of people have asked about, you know, why do we beat ourselves up? Why are we our own worst enemies and how can we get out of that? Because we, we, we do, we get on ourselves. We get on ourselves and I want to set you free from that, okay? And here it is in a very surgical way, 
um, in terms of explaining it. The thoughts that you experience that seem like you beating up on yourself, they are just thoughts, okay? You, this is huge if you can learn to accept this and live from this, you are not your thoughts. Okay, and this whole path of what I talk about, finding inner peace, it's really about the path from the head to the heart. And when I say being in your head like I often do, or being numb, what that is is who you are as really your attention. Okay, your attention, wherever your attention is in the moment, that's the essence of who you are. And when, when we're in our heads, our attention is glued to our thoughts, almost like they're the same thing. And so for a lot of you, when I say, hey, you are not your thoughts, you might think like, well, what the heck does that even mean? I'm not my thoughts. Okay, what do I do with that? What can I do with that information? And here's what you can do, okay? You can use meditation. And I don't even like the word meditation because it conjures up all kinds of Eastern religious stuff and it's not, it doesn't have to be that. What meditation is is a chance to bring your attention away from your thoughts and to allow you to gain conscious control of your attention because your attention is like a little kid and anything it's like any shiny object that comes up it's like oh look at that oh look at that oh shiny you know and it like it has like ADD okay and so what I do for meditation I don't do it so much anymore because it just kind of has become who I am okay but what you can do here's what I recommend and a lot of people have asked me this for suggestions for guided meditations. Here's why, sit in a quiet room, relax, tune into the silence as much as you can, and then start to put the same thought out there over and over and over and over. You could call it a mantra if you want to, you don't have to, but what I recommend is just say the word thoughts in your mind, over and over like this. In, in your mind though, I'm gonna say it out loud. Thoughts, 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 and just think that over and over. And what you can do is start to observe that word that's coming up in your mind. And over time you start to notice, you know what, I'm not the thought because I'm the attention that is noticing it, that is aware of it. And what you can do as you keep that word thoughts going, and what it does is it keeps your attention from jumping onto new thoughts. Like if you're, like the repetitive thought kind of gives a backdrop for you to then bring your attention into your body. You keep those thoughts going and notice you can observe those thoughts and you can start to scan your body at the same time. And the repetitive thought just kind of keeps things stable and steady so that your attention isn't getting pulled away by like what you need to do tomorrow or thinking this isn't working or whatever it is. And just keep that little mantra going, thoughts, 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 thoughts. And bring your attention into your body and scan every part. See if you can get your attention into every little tiny part of your body. See if you can feel your toes, feel your feet feel your head, you know, work all the way around and mainly in your chest and your heart and your solar plexus, spend time in there, okay? And then once you've got um, some practice and you're able to scan your body and you realize, that, wow, I can bring my attention away from my thoughts, below the level of my thoughts and I can scan my body, then the next step is start to think of things intentionally that make you scared or that make you mad or bring up a negative emotion. Maybe it's a person that you hate or some situation, you know, losing a loved one, whatever it is, anything that brings up a strong negative emotion. And as you think about it, it will make, your body will respond, okay? Because like I say, any discomfort, um, any stressful thought is really just a representation of repressed and stress-ridden energy that's blocked in your body. So when you think of those things that bring up discomfort, then just use that same scanning process and go in and find where is that bound up energy. That's how you face fears, guys. That's how you face fears. You go in, you find them with your attention, and you spend time relaxing your attention into those knots of fear. And as you release those knots of energy that are in your body, and for me, it's, it's usually right here. As you do that, the fears start to dissolve. And pretty soon, you're starting that business and you're not being scared. You know, it takes time, okay? It takes time. For me, this process of really making a significant change, it took a little over two and a half years. And I spent tons of time feeling feelings and spending time scanning my body and observing the thoughts. And so you want to just peel your attention away from the thoughts. And I've just given you some tools for how to do that. And that's how you face your feels fears. And so within that, <laughs> those questions about um, why do we beat up on ourselves? Okay, what happens from a psychological scientific standpoint is that 
in the culture that you were raised in, you were ingrained with certain beliefs and certain ideas and the way that your parents treated you, the way that your siblings treated you, the way that your teachers treated you, it built into your psyche, okay? You think of your mind as just something that churns out thoughts, okay? Through your experience, you have certain beliefs that are ingrained into you and then based on what those beliefs are in your mind, your mind churns out thoughts, and it's based on a survival mechanism. It's trying to protect you from dying. That's essentially what your mind is doing. And really a more specific way to say it, and I love talking about this stuff because it's just, this is the big stuff of life. It's so important. Um, but your mind is trying to prevent you from being rejected, from feeling rejected because it, your mind literally thinks that those feelings in your body represent death and rejection. So this whole path of getting out of the quicksand is getting away from those fearful thoughts of the mind and not believing them and going into the feelings, relaxing and releasing them. And then your thoughts change. So feel your feelings and change your thoughts will change because your thoughts are literally just a reflection of the bound up energy in your body. Does that make sense? It's so exciting because enlightenment does not have to be a mystery anymore. It doesn't have to be this like spiritual wild goose chase. Go into the feelings, feel the feelings, release that energy, express that energy. There's lots of different ways to do it. There's lots of different tools, okay? And if I was with you in person, there's all kinds of things that we can do to help you get into your body. Okay, through these videos, I can only do so much. In person is where really, really good stuff happens, okay? But this is what we've got for now. So as you release these feelings, the, the character and the nature of your thoughts change. People always ask me, why am I always smiling and am I always happy? And you know, I have negative emotions that come up and I'm not always happy, but generally I am. And it's because since I've done my work, my thoughts now change and the things that I used to be scared about, I'm not. The things that I used to be worried about, I'm not. Because that peace that surpasses all understanding, okay, that's mentioned in the Bible, it's real. And the path to the peace that surpasses all understanding is through your heart, okay? The path is through the feelings. I say it over and over and over. So anybody who keeps asking me about stressful situations in their life, okay, I hate to be repetitive and I hate to continue to point to the same thing, but like I say, I like to keep things simple. And so I'm not gonna, you know, try to get you following me around on all these different ideas and things like that so that I can charge you money because I don't do any of this for money. I don't do none of this for any other reason because I love it and I found what I'm looking for and I want to share it with you. And I'm good at explaining things in a very systematic way. So I will always point you inward. Whatever is stressing you out, no matter what it is, no matter what is bothering you, there is an unresolved feeling in your body and that thing that you think is bothering you is um, a, 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 manif a mental manifestation of that, okay? And so what happens is different unresolved energies in our body, and they're just stuck feelings. <sighs> the mind wants to avoid them because the mind doesn't realize that there's another way, okay? The way that I'm telling you about, about feeling, the mind doesn't know about it. So you've been running on this program that is like trying to solve problems, trying to fix the world around you so that you can feel good. But guess what? It never works. No matter what you change in the world around you, it never works. Even like if there's a war and people think like, we'll be happy, you know, once we get rid of that other country or once we win our um, independence or whatever it is that, that leads up to a war. Okay. But then once the war is over and time goes on, there's an initial feeling of freedom and hey, we won. But guess what? the same unresolved emotions are still going to be there. And then people get on to the next thing that's bothering them. And that's why, you know, people work, 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 and everyone wants to get rich. But then people who do get rich, they find out like, I'm still not happy. Okay, we all know the stories of people. Um, you know, Steve Wynn comes to mind. I don't know why, but the guy who owns a bunch of casinos in Vegas, he owns the Wynn casino, which is so beautiful. If you've never been there, I hope you get a chance to go there sometime. But I've heard so many stories about him, you know, he's millions and millions and millions and even billions of dollars and they just continue on these pursuits for happiness. And they just seem to never find it. You know, they buy everything, they buy all this like, you know, ridiculously expensive art and cars and they do all these things. And Financial freedom does not bring happiness, okay? So for those of you who think that, you know, your financial freedom is the thing that's stressing you out and once you get that taken care of, you'll be happy, I'm inviting you to just drop that. Okay, whatever stress you have around finances, go inward and if you can get those emotions resolved and you can expand your heart, 
through doing what I'm suggesting, you will find that the financial things will, will work themselves out. But I, if I give you advice about how to make money, you know, which you know, I could do that, but that's not going to get you the inner peace that you're looking for. Does that make sense? I could help you solve any specific problem, but it's not going to get you what you're ultimately looking for. So that's why I don't give day-to-day -day advice about how to do this and how to make money or how to, how to break up with somebody. And we can talk about those things, okay? Those are things that I have you know, helpful input around, but I'm talking about the biggest thing in life, which is heart opening, heart expansion, where as that happens, all of these other things tend to take care of themselves. So it's kind of like, if you had um, a bunch of holes in a boat and you were starting to sink, okay, you could like try to plug each hole, try to take care of each individual problem, but the boat is still sinking, okay? Or you could realize, hey, there's another boat right next to this one that's sinking that I didn't even notice was there. And it's going to be tough to jump from this boat to that other boat, but hey, guess what? I can figure out a way to do it. And once I get into that new boat, it's a new life. And now things are feeling good and all the things I thought needed to be done and all my to-do list and all the perfectionism around trying to get everything right so that I can finally feel good and reward myself. That's the hamster wheel. And if that resonates with you, if you feel like you're stuck on that hamster wheel, this, the way to get off of it is consciously choosing to get time in silence and to do what I say, you know, get that mantra going to get away from your thoughts, bring your attention, that it, your attention that's your number one asset. And what I'm telling you to do is spend time with your attention in your body and conjure up things that bother you and then learn to feel into where that stress is. And it might take a while because when you're numb, when you haven't been doing this, it can, you know, I can imagine some people do, and I've had people do, they contact me and say, Ryan, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. I sit there and I don't feel anything in my body and then I just kind of get bored or I just, my, my mind starts spinning and then I just get up and I leave. It's okay, but you got to stick with it. You got to stick with it. You got to relax, tune into the silence. Let the silence call you home. It took me a while to really find out what silence was, but I remember you know, I had been meditating and doing things like this for a while, you know, I don't know, a couple of years until I really started to really know what that silence was. I can remember one day in particular um, in January of 2014 where I was sitting in my meditation room and we had a bunch of people visiting from out of town and they were downstairs and I could hear them talking. And, and I was part of me thought like I should probably go down and spend time with our guests. But I just knew in the room there was just this silence like right there. It was right in front of my record player. It just was like silent right there. And it reminded me of being in my room when I was a little kid. And it just was like calling me. And so for the next three days, as much as I was able to, I just spent time tuning into that silence, not thinking about silence, okay? Because that's when you're stuck in your thoughts. But this is bringing your awareness, your attention into the silence in the room and relaxing and also feeling into your body. Okay, I know you've heard me talk about it before and that's where the magic happens. All right, well, I've shared enough for this video. I am excited. You know why I'm excited? Because I know that everything I talk about is absolutely real and legitimate and it's just fun to talk so freely and openly with no needs from you, no expectations. I'm not trying to accomplish anything but just offer this up on a silver platter for those of you who choose to partake. Okay, and I invite you to partake and I'm here with you and for you. I believe in you and I hope you can believe in yourself because that's the number way to start doing this is to take ownership to say I'm worthy Okay, because all those thoughts that are beating up on yourself. That's not really you. That's the conditioning. Okay, I was talking about it before about you grow up in a certain culture the way that your parents and your siblings treated you. Those thoughts are a remnant of how you were treated. So those thoughts that beat up on you and say you're, you're bad and you're this and you're never good enough and all that. That's not you. You're not those thoughts. And as you learn to peel your attention away from those thoughts and resolve the feelings in your body, guess what? Those thoughts start to dissipate. Those thoughts start to go away. Before you know it, you're thinking, I'm awesome and I'm amazing and I'm so excited about myself like you did when you were a kid. You were alive. You didn't doubt yourself. You know, when you were really young, you just did what you wanted to do and you were there in the moment being excited, being enthralled by all the things that were around you, living your life, not worrying not depressed, not anxious. Okay, so it's one day at a time, one step at a time, one session in silence at a time. 
and I love you. And we have a team forming, you know, this is all informal, but this is a love revolution. Hearts are opening and we're going to just keep opening them until there's no more hearts to open. How's that sound? I know you're with me. Have a great day. I love you. <laughs>